Here's our new assignment. We're gonna end up making a chess pawn and there's some really cool things that we're gonna learn along the way to do that. Um, here's the assignment page for this and let's just go ahead and look at a couple uh, different things in here. So let's start off by looking at our goals, all right? So our goal is to uh, be able to add a canvas to a Fusion 360 design. If you don't know what that is right now, that's fine. I'm gonna teach you today. Uh, another goal is to be able to calibrate that canvas so the picture in the canvas is a certain size. Um, our third goal is to create dimensions using the parameters chart. And you guys saw the parameters chart the last time in uh, our last uh, Turner Cube assignment. And our fourth goal is to use the rotate tool to make a two-dimensional sketch into a three-dimensional object. And this rotate tool is really kind of cool. It's kind of like extrude, except it doesn't pull things up. It pulls things around an axis. Um, and I just want to kind of get that idea in your head right now. It's kind of like this paper um, ball. Uh, when it starts out, you can see there's half of a, um, a circle. Uh, there, that's like the white thing right there is half of a circle. And you know, this, uh, this gal in the picture is just pulling the two things together and it creates a 3D ball behind it. And that's pretty much what we're gonna do today. We're gonna draw half of a chess pawn and we're gonna circle it around an axis and it will end up being a full chess pawn. All right, cool. Uh, and so here are the, uh, the requirements for this assignment, I'll let you pause and read them, but we're just gonna be uh, doing these together one at a time, so uh, no worries. We will make sure that all of these happen for credit on this assignment. Uh, let's go ahead, I'm gonna switch over to Fusion 360, um, and we are going to begin. Oh, actually, I'm a little bit of a liar there. Uh, before we get going, uh, you can see the third requirement says we need to insert a canvas into the design. I'll show you how that works in a second here. But there is a link to a picture in there. So I need you to make sure that you download that picture to whatever computer that you're using right now. That could be one of my classroom PCs or it could be your Chromebook. Just remember where you downloaded it to. If you're doing this lesson on your Chromebook, uh, after you download it, the easiest place to find it is in that Recents folder, and we'll see that in just a second here. Okay, so I'm just gonna click on that. Uh, it takes me to this, and you can see we're going to be designing the chess pawn here all the way on the left. Uh, and today we're not gonna be designing the rest, but I need to download this picture, and the way that I do that is the download button right here. So I will press that and I am on a Mac, so this is what it looks like to download something on a Mac. I'll click Save. Uh, I just saved it to my download folder. I'll uh, let you guys save it to whatever uh, download folder of whatever computer you're working on. All right, let's switch back over here. Here we are, Fusion 360. We've got a brand new design here. Let's go ahead and make sure that we go to the data panel and click Home. And let's go ahead and get into our Learn Fusion folder, or sorry, our Learn Fusion project. And here's the three folders that we should have so far. We should have CMS, Initials, and Turner Cube. We are going to create a new folder. And let's call that one Chess. All right, so I have a Chess folder now. I'm going to open it up. Make sure your screen looks like mine at this point. Make sure that you see the little house. Make sure that you see the Learn Fusion project and the chess folder inside of that project. And before we begin doing anything over in the design part of the screen, we are going to put that picture into this <clears throat> folder. Here's how we're gonna do that. We got a blue upload button right here. You're gonna click upload and it brings us up to this little screen right here that says, hey, where, where do we wanna upload it from and where do we wanna upload it to? Make sure your location has Learn Fusion and Chess in it. If it does not have Learn Fusion and Chess, click on Change Location and switch it so that you have Learn Fusion uh, and Chess open. 
Okay. Uh, after you're sure that you have Learn Fusion and Chess as the save location or the upload location, we're going to click on Select Files. Again, I'm on a Mac. This is what it looks like for me on a Mac. You might be on a Chromebook. If you just click that Select Files on a Chromebook, you should probably click the Recent Files over there on the left-hand side of your Select File menu, and you should see that image that we just downloaded, which is called Modern Staunton. Dot jpg so there's the one that i just downloaded you can see i downloaded it earlier to, uh, a little bit earlier uh, so there it is a little bit earlier but uh, either one will for me will work i'll highlight it and i will click open and then you will see there's the modern staunton uh, jpeg which is a picture type file uh, and it's ready to upload so i will click upload and you can see it is uploading that right now. And after it says upload complete, I will click close. And we just have this JPEG in the folder now. I'll leave that alone. Let's go over to our actual design space. Okay. Uh, let's start off by having our untitled design and let's save our untitled design, very first thing. Again, make sure you have the right location. I have Learn Fusion and Chess. And let's name this one Pawn, P-A-W-N. And click Save. And you should see that design file pop up in the data panel. And yeah, okay, so we're all set on the data panel. I will close that so I get a little bit more space on my screen. Let's go ahead and start getting into this. Uh, you know I like to start off on the XZ plane, so I'm going to uh, start a new sketch like we always do very first thing in most of our designs is start a sketch. I'll pop into my origin folder and I will choose the XZ plane. Boom, great. I, now I have a, uh, this sketch plane on the XZ plane. I will look right down at my sketch plane. And I told you guys today that we are going to learn how to trace an object. It's so cool. I love doing this. I, it makes designing so much easier when you can just take a picture of something, trace around it, and then figure out how to turn it into a 3D thing. That's what we're doing today. So let me show you the very first step in doing that. Uh, here I am. I have up here this insert area and if I click on the insert menu you can see I, have, I can insert lots of uh, different things here uh, a drive a decal a canvas well we're interested in inserting this canvas right here so I'm gonna click on canvas and it says okay what canvas do you want to insert now inserting a canvas really means we're inserting a picture like a background picture that we can trace over and so when I click insert it's going to start off in whatever folder I'm in so you can see there's learn fusion and chess and make sure that you're in the right location which is the learn fusion project and the chess folder and you should see that JPEG and here's mine modern Staunton so I will click on it and I will say insert and all right, now it brings open this canvas menu. So I have the image selected. Now it wants me to say, what face do I want to insert that image on? Well, we started off on the XZ plane. That's where our sketch is. So that picture that we're tracing should also be on the XZ plane. That should be this guy down here, but you know I like to be careful. So I'm going to go over to my browser, and I'm going to click on the XZ plane from my browser. And then you get this fun kind of little thing. It might be kind of zoomed out for you. But if you zoom in, you can see there's our picture of our chess set. And what I want to do first is I want to use my angle spinner and spin it so that it is pointing up, which would be a 90 degree spin. For me, it looks like it will be a positive 90 degree spin, so I'll type in positive 90. If positive 90 does not work for you, try negative 90. That's, that's probably what 
will be the degrees that it takes. And again, the way that I got it to spin is there's this circle around the picture and there's a little kind of smaller circle on it. And if you grab that smaller circle, it will let you tilt your picture back and forth. All right, uh, so that's, that's your tilter. And remember, I wanna set my tilt at 90 degrees. Okay, once it's, uh, once it's facing up, uh, I'm gonna hit enter. And there we go, we are good now. All right, so I have added a picture. And we're going to trace with that picture in just a little bit here. But one of the really cool things that we can do is we want uh, to make a chess piece that is the correct size. And I don't know how big everything in this picture is right now. I think I'm designing in millimeters mode. So you could see that if I kind of look at each little square in my grid here, that's about a mill that those each one of those is a millimeter. So it looks like this guy is one, two, three, four, five millimeters tall which is way too small for a real chess piece. So we are going to calibrate this canvas now, which means we're going to say, hey, from this point on the picture to this point on the picture is really this distance in real life. And it will resize our picture automatically so that we can design the correct size of stuff. Here's how we do that. And this is called calibrating. You can see after I added the canvas over here in my browser, I have a folder that we've never seen before. It's this canvases folder. So if I use the arrow next to it and open it up, you can see there's my modern Staunton canvas. What I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on the, the canvas or the picture and or on your Chromebook, that's your two finger tap. And I am going to choose the Calibrate option. All right. And let's do this. I'm going to resize my pawn here. So I'm zooming in on my pawn. And Calibrate wants me to pick two points. And then I will say, what should the distance between those two points be? And it will resize the picture so that the distance between those two points is whatever I tell it to be. So the very first point I'll add is get right on to the very tip top of that chess pawn right there. So I'll click there. You can see it added a point to the very top of the chess pawn. And then, and I'm kind of right, like right in the middle line of this. Okay. And if I go down here and I click down there, you could see, all right, now it wants me to set a dimension. Oh, I was off by a whole millimeter when I looked at that earlier, wasn't I? You can see right now the distance between these two spots that I just added is 4.02 something millimeters. Well, a regulation chess pawn or a real size chess pawn that they use in tournaments is 50 millimeters, so I'll type in 50 and I will hit enter. And you can see my picture is now huge. I'll need to zoom out because we changed it from four millimeters to 50 millimeters real quick. And here's the next thing that I'm going to do. I want to move this so that my up and down green uh, axis over here, which is my Z axis according to my Z, uh, view cube, cuts this guy right in half, cuts my pawn right in half. So I am going to go back to my canvas over here in the browser, I will right click on it and I will say edit. And it will bring open that same tool that we had when we inserted it. So you can see my spinner and this arrow moves it to the right and this arrow moves it up and down. Okay, these ones right here would change the size of the canvas. I'm not gonna change the size of the canvas because we just set it correctly. I like to use this square that's in the middle, that's the free move tool. 
So that kind of lets me move wherever I want to instead of just left and right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to place the very uh, right kind of above the green felt pad on the bottom of that, uh, right on the origin. And I want to make sure as I'm pulling this down that that green line is pretty dang close to splitting this chess piece in half. And so if I look at this, I would say this, this green line, my Z axis is doing a really good job of cutting this guy in half. And my point is right there on the bottom. Now don't obsess over getting this perfect uh, because uh, it doesn't need to be perfect. I mean, you could still have a really great looking chess uh, pawn if you're, you know, a few tenths of a millimeter off or whatever on this alignment. Okay, so I'm done moving my canvas around, so I will click OK to the Edit Canvas menu. And now, let's do some things to make this really accurate, really real world, and really fast. I'm going to hit S on my keyboard, and remember that lets me search for things. And just like last time, I'm going to search for those parameters. So here we go. We have change parameters. I'll bring that open. And last time we were editing model parameters. Well, I haven't added anything to the sketch or the model yet, except for this canvas. Uh, so I don't have any model parameters right now. We're going to make our own parameters that we can call up later in our design. So that's this user's parameter right here. You should probably have a little plus sign next to user parameters. Go ahead and hit that plus sign. And it says, okay, well, what parameter do you want to enter? So let's just go ahead and call this one pawn uh, height. Uh, pawn underscore height. So these parameters, uh, they're kind of like variables. If you remember using variables, uh, they have to be one word long, that means no spaces. That's why I put that underscore there because it wouldn't let me put a space with the space bar. We're gonna make sure that it's still in uh, millimeters. And then it wants me to enter an expression. So basically that means enter a number in millimeters. So in the real world, if you go to a chess competition, the pawns are gonna be 50 millimeters tall. So, what I'm going to do for my pawn height parameter is type in 50. And now we have a, a dimension that we can use later on. I'll click OK. We're going to add another one that tells it how wide it is. Okay. And if you remember, like from one edge of a circle to the other edge of a circle, if I go right through the middle of the circle, that is called a diameter. So if you imagine the chess pawn, the very bottom of the chess pawn is a circle. So that means it has a diameter. The diameter of all chess pieces is 50% of their height. It's kind of a fun fact. Well, technically between 40 and 50%. We'll use 50% today. So we are going to make a new parameter, or like a new variable. And let's just call that one um, piece diameter. That means we can use this uh, for lots of other pieces besides just the pawn. Again, I want to make sure that my units are in millimeters and that expression, this one's going to be kind of fun. What I'm going to do is I am going to click over here on pawn height. Uh, no, I am not. I will have to type that in. Sorry. I'll have to type in pawn Ah, yeah, there, that's that's what it does. So when I start typing in something, it will open up the other parameters that I've created. So I'm going to choose pawn height. I'll have to do it with my arrows and hit the enter key. So I just selected it with the arrows on my keyboard and hit enter. And if I want my piece diameter to be... Uh, 50% of my uh, my height, I just go height times, which is the asterisk 
which is uh, hitting, holding shift and hitting eight on your keyboard. And 50% is a decimal is 0 0.5. So there you go. And, and you can see, oh yeah, that's gonna create something uh, 25. And let's go ahead and click OK. So now I have a piece diameter. But I'm in a little bit of a tough spot here because, like I said, we are only going to be tracing half of the pawn. And half of a diameter, I hope you remember this from math, is a radius. So let's go ahead and make one more parameter here, and we'll call that one piece underscore radius. That's still in millimeters. Here's going to be our expression. I'll start typing pawn. But, oh, sorry. I'll type the last one, which wasn't pawn. That was piece, piece diameter. So a diameter is from one edge of the circle to the other. Well, I only want half of that. That's what a radius is. So I'm going to take my diameter and I'm going to divide that by, and I hope you said two with me right there because it is two. And I will click OK. So now I basically have these three constraints, uh, or these three parameters, sorry, pawn height, pawn di a piece diameter, and piece radius. I think we're done with that for now. Let's go ahead and click OK. Now let me show you how we're going to use that. All right, I'm going to start with a line, and I will auto-constrain that line to the origin. So it might be kind of hard to see because of the background image, but I'm gonna wait till my mouse turns into a blue box and I will click that means it locked it in with an auto constraint and I will I will on purpose do this I'm not going to go straight up and down because I'll use a constraint to lock that in place but when I click all right I'm going to hit escape to get out of my line tool let's do this so that our line is nice and up and down, I'm going to use my vertical constraint and I'm going to say, all right, the top point should be vertical to that bottom point and we'll lock it into place like that. One more thing, I'm going to hit D on my keyboard to open the dimension tool and I'll just click on my line and pull the label away a little bit. And you can see right now mine is 51 point something long what I'm going to do though is I'm going to type in pawn and you could see right there, there's my pawn height. I don't even have to type a number, okay? I'm going to hit return or enter on my keyboard and I'm going to make that, boom, 50. And if I wanted to, right, if I could open up those parameters again. Now, I'm just showing you as an example what I'm doing right now. You don't have to do. And... You can see that that line is splitting my uh, pawn in half and it's also 50 millimeters tall. If I wanted to change its size, I could go right here into the parameters uh, menu and I could say, well, instead of 50, maybe you should be 40. And you can see that changes my line, which I think is way cool to do uh, because you could just change stuff in this list and it makes it so much faster than trying to find the right thing. Uh, especially if you remember when we were designing our letters, I mean, there were kind of dimensions and stuff everywhere. So this just makes it easier to find and easier to change. So we've got that, and I'm going to say, let's add a new line. And let's again start this new line at the origin. So auto constrain to the origin, and I'm just gonna kind of shoot it off to the side. I'll hit escape to get out of there. Again, I want to use my horizontal constraint and I'm going to say, hey, this point should be horizontal to that point. And I will again use the dimension tool, which is D on my keyboard. And I'll click on this line and I'll move the label out. And this time I'm going to start typing in piece, P-I-E-C-E. Well, since this starts in the middle and goes to the edge, I gotta ask myself, is that the piece diameter or the piece radius? Well, I hope you said the piece radius because that is what it is. I'm gonna choose the piece radius and I'm gonna hit return. Now, 
you could see something a little weird here maybe. There's our piece radius and it doesn't quite line up with the very edge of our real life piece. And that is because this is a picture and a picture has perspective. It's not orthographic like I'm looking at right now. Remember orthographic means like a completely flat 2D look at something. Well, this is a picture of a 3D environment, so these pieces aren't gonna be completely flat. I mean, look at this rook over here. You can kind of see the back of the crenellations there. Uh, so yeah, we just know that isn't completely flat. So things are gonna look a little bit weird, but we're, we're gonna get around that a little bit. Now here comes the fun part. We are going to trace out this half of, of the pawn. Uh, I'm going to start with the point tool, okay? And what I'm going to do is let's start by kind of, let's place, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here. I'm going to go over to my line right here and do you see the crease? Uh, the, the very first crease that we have right there in the pond, I'm going to put a, a point somewhere pretty close to that crease. And then I'm going to go out here, um, just somewhere, and I'm gonna put another point, okay? And here's why we're doing that. I want this point uh, to be kind of like a corner. It's kind of hard to tell looking at this, but the this piece really goes up and over, or the real chess piece kind of does, and it rounds it out a little bit. And we'll fix that with a fillet later. But let's say this, let's go here to horizontal vertical and let's fix this point right here. Let's say this point that's floating out all by itself right now, it's not constrained. This point needs to be horizontal to that point. And let's say that this point also needs to be vertical to this point. Okay. And I'm gonna open my sketches folder because, uh-oh, I have something that is not fully constrained right now. And I'll bet you that's because if I hit escape, this point over here, I can, yeah, see, I can scoot that one up and down. So here's how we're gonna lock it into place. I'm gonna get it into the crease and then I'll use D on my keyboard and I'll just say, okay, it's the distance between these two things or the origin in that point. I will just click I'm not gonna change the number there because it's already in the crease. I'll hit enter and we'll just let it be 3.8873 or whatever it is for the rest of its life. All right, we have basically kind of made this bottom ridge. I know it might not really look like it yet. Let's try to use our imaginations a little bit here so you can see here's the flat base of the pond and then it will come up to right here and then it should come in a little bit and it's gonna come into kind of where this ridge meets. So let's just kind of look at the picture, how far it, come, it comes in there. I'm going to create a point and let's, uh, let's just say, let's just put that point kind of a little bit over here-ish, right? So you can see this curve comes around and then it kind of meets the base right about here. So yeah, if I put this right about here, that's pretty good. And as we get up here a little bit, uh, this will start to follow the curves a little bit more. Let's lock that point into place though. Let's say, hey, Mr. Point, you have to be horizontal to this one and let's also say uh, that you have to be, I'll use the dimension tool now, D on my keyboard, and I'll just draw a little dimension between these guys and I'll just lock it in wherever it is, okay? So for me, that's about 2.4. You should be pretty close to that too. And now we're just gonna spam some, some points here. So I'm gonna bring my point tool open. So we're kind of like, I know it's kind of hard to see because the crevice is actually, back, it looks like it's back there, but since we're in line with this, this is really where the crevice is. But let's go ahead and just start 
following that curve and it's kind of, might be kind of hard for you to see but I've got some things right there some I'm just gonna kind of follow along here and one thing I want to be careful of is my outermost point I don't want it to go over this these two points on those because those are like my boundary my edge so I'm gonna make sure that this guy my outermost one is directly vertical to that and yeah I can already see that I might want to like reconsider maybe that's what I should have done first so I'm gonna hit control Z a few times and let's go and create a point and let's kind of put it at the widest part of this bulge right here and we'll let's put it right about there and now now let's say this guy should be directly vertical to that okay now let's use some points here so again we have some perspective tricks going on here uh, we don't want our our pawn to be any wider than this even though the picture is out over here okay this is like the widest we want our pawn to be so I'm going to draw a few points I'm going to follow the same curve but keep it on the inside a little bit so um, I'm just gonna kind of put this one down you know I think I think we'll just leave that because when I, I'll use the spline tool and that will capture this curve pretty well so that means let's go ahead and put one more point right here all right and you can see with this point there's kind of another little crease and this one goes straight up and I'll just go kind of right here again I have this weird perspective trick so I'll do this thing where I look where that crease is so here's that crease and I'll just attach it to that line right there and then this point I'm just gonna kinda throw somewhere right about here I could try to use this auto constraint if yours auto constraints fine but I'm, I'm not going to use auto constraint. I'm just going to kind of put it there. And then I will use the horizontal vertical. I'll say, hey, this point here has to be uh, horizontal to that one. And it has to be vertical to that one. Now you can see it kind of scooted that out. So I'll just kind of scoot it or scoot that in. And I'll just kind of scoot it out until it's in a place that I like. All right. So again, we have another one of these situations where I go straight up and then straight in a little bit. So I'll create a point. And so where where's my crease? My crease is, you can see that curve kind of take off right there. So let's say that this one's right about here. And one more time because this guy needs to be horizontal with this one. Okay, I lost my red lock, and you can see I have lots of white dots here that are not constrained. We'll fix those up in just a minute with our fix and unfix tool. And now I'm just going to find one spot along this curve. I'm going to look for the like kind of a low spot, like right here. And then I'll put another point... I don't want to auto constrain it so I'll put that other point at the top of that curve and then here we go we have another shelf situation so I'm gonna put this point over here and these two points because it's a shelf situation should be horizontal from each other and it's moved this one up so I'm just gonna move it down a little bit go back to creating a point and I'll just throw this one out here now remember you want this point right here to be directly over the top of that one and I will narrow that gap just a little bit there I'll go back to creating a point and I will just choose a point
Let's see here. I need to get lit, so it's going to kind of come up and come over. You know, I'm going to fix all this, yeah, with some fillets. So I'll just put a point right there. And I have a lot of white points, so here's what I'm going to do so that I get my red lock back. All right. I'm going to kind of zoom out so I can see all my white points. And I will kind of click all the way over. So what I did on my trackpad is I clicked and I held down and I dragged this selection box out until it covers up all my white points. And then I'm going to apply the fix unfix constraint to them. And there we go, my red lock is back. Let's talk about what to do about our the head of the chess pawn right now. I'm going to maybe use something we haven't used yet. And that is, I'll go to the circle here. Let's use a two-point circle. And here's how a two-point circle is going to work. I'm going to click on this top point. And you can see as I drag the circle down now, it drags it out. So I want it to be, let's just set it to right here for right now. It's a blue circle. And let's lock it in because we have this green point which is fixed. It can't move. So I want to say, hey, Mr. Circle or Miss Circle, whatever it wants to be. Let's say you have to be coincident, I have my coincident uh, constraint open, to that point. And that kind of locks it into place. Okay, let's also say that the middle of our circle has to be coincident to our straight up and down line. And there we go, that locked it into place just like I want. And here comes the tracing part. We're gonna do a lot here. I'm going to start with the line because basically to go from here to here, that's just a straight line. And then to go from here to here is a straight line. And then to go to here to here is a straight line. And I'll hit enter or escape actually, sorry. And uh, you can see now I'm getting to a part where I have some curves. Now I know that this chess pawn right, has rounded edges here and we'll fix that with the fillet in just a little bit here. Okay, now let's curve it up as we go from here down to here. So that is going to be this spline and I'll say we'll start at this point and then we'll click on the point that's in the middle and then we'll move on down here and I will click into place there and you can see that one does a pretty good job following the curve. So when I'm done, I hit enter to lock in my spine. And then again, we have another one of those shelves. So I'll just use a line for that. So a straight line from here to here and a, another straight line from here to there. And I will hit escape to get out of my line tool. And then we're back to kind of a curvy piece. So I will bring open my spline again, and I'll go, all right, start there, move here, and go down to here. And that's a pretty good representation of the curve. I'll hit enter. Yeah. Oh, I'm really liking that. Who would have thought? I don't know. When I was your guys' age, and I sound like such an old man saying this, I, I fully realize that but I never thought I'd be able to trace a picture and turn it into a 3D object that I could print out. That just blows my mind still. So cool what we can do. And then we have one last kind of shelf situation here. So I'll go straight line from here to here, straight line. So I just used the line tool and then I'll hit escape to get out of my line tool. And I should have a completely closed profile. So I have two. Okay, so we have a head and a body basically. And once yours looks like mine, what we could do is we can finish the sketch. 
Now, I don't know if you remember that little paper ball from the beginning of the video that I was showing you that rotated around to become 3D. Well, that's what we're going to do now. We're going to use the rotate or the revolve tool, sorry, which is right here. It's also under create and it's revolve. It does not have a keyboard shortcut. So this is what it looks like. I'll click on revolve. Now, it says, hey, what things do I want to revolve? And those, what profiles do I want to revolve? So we're going to select all the profiles on the left half of the pawn, which is the body, and this half of the head. You can see I have half the pawn selected. And then we have an axis, which is kind of like our mirror tool, but imagine we had a mirror that wrapped around 360 degrees. So we still want to choose the one line that it should wrap around. And that's the line right down here in the middle. So I'll choose from axis, make sure it says select. And I will choose my up and down line. And then again, you can see it kind of turned gray over there. So if I use my view cube, I can see the preview of what that's going to look like. Oh man, now I really, I'm digging the way that looks, okay. I will click OK, and there we have a pawn. All right, now I'm going to kind of round out some of the stuff so it looks a little bit more like our picture. So I will use a fillet for, so some fillets for that. So let me kind of go up here. Let's start with the top edge of the shelf down here, okay? So I'll bring open my fillet tool. I'll click on that one edge. And let me just, I'm just going to kind of eyeball this one. That's a little too much. So what looks good to me here is like 0.5 millimeters looks pretty good to me. And again, you can, you can uh, adjust yours to your preference. This is just what I think looks good. So I'll click OK. And then I'm going to bring the fillet tool open again, and I will fill it this other really sharp edge. I don't like that really sharp edge. So again, maybe like 0.5. Yeah, 0.5 looks really good. All right, and then it looks like about one or two more sharp edges, so I'll click OK. I'll bring open my fillet. This one here on the bottom for sure needs a good one. And that might be a little bit more. I'll say one, okay. If I zoom in here, I have one more kind of sharp edge that I don't like right up there. So I'll fill it this sharp edge at the top, right? And probably 0.5 will do the trick for this one. Yeah, yes, 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 yes. I'll we'll click okay. And there is a chest pawn. Now, what I can do, just so I can see the pawn itself and not the picture behind it, is, you know, just like always, I can use the eyeballs over here to turn things on and off. Like, if I wanted to turn the sketch on, I could see the sketch. If I wanted to turn the canvas off, well, if I turn that canvas off, then I see the pawn all by itself. And that looks like a pretty swell pawn, I think. I like the look of that, okay? And then the last thing I'll do is just kind of make it my own and uh, go in here to bodies and let's rename some stuff here. So let's rename our sketch so that it is um, pawn sketch and let's rename this body pawn. And I am going to right click on the pawn body I will change its appearance. I think I'm going to use stone. Let's find some good stone here. A stone chess piece would look really cool. Yeah, oh, here we go. Let's, we got some granites. We got black and white granite, uh, blue pearl granite, red granite. Let's try black and white granite. So I'm gonna click on that, drag it over to pawn, place it on pawn. And yeah, that looks kind of chunky right now, but I'll right click on it up here and edit it. And I'll turn down the scale on that. Oh yeah. 
Where do I like that? I like it right about there. Yeah. That's a cool chess piece. I'll click done and close. And I am ready to save it. I'll click save and there we go. I am done with this. Uh, to turn it in, uh, you will need to go to Fusion Teams, which is if you go to your data panel, just the little eyeball right there. And you will need to grab the share link to this design and turn that into the assignment. But this has been real cool. I love, I love, love, love this uh, technique of being able to trace something and then turn it into a 3D design. All right, thanks guys.